Okay, this is the beginning of um, video nine, part two. In part one, we looked at um, matter and we looked at pure substances and I defined for you elements and compounds. Then we recognize that there's different types of compounds and the two types of compounds that we're going to be most concerned with are ionic compounds and covalent compounds. In the last lecture we looked at um, recognizing and naming and predicting the formulas for ionic compounds based on the names of those ionic compounds. Right now what I want to do is talk to you about um, covalent compounds. Now, covalent compounds are called covalent compounds based on the, um, the way the atoms within the molecule are held together. Um, molecules are held together by what's called covalent bonds. And elements, as we saw, can exist as diatomic molecules, which are held together by covalent bonds, or compounds, combinations of different elements can be um, held together by different, um, by bonds called covalent bonds, all right? So um, in this slide here, what I'm showing you is a model of how covalent molecules are formed. Um, whereas in the ionic compounds, the individual ions were just held together by very strong electrostatic attractions between the positive charges of the cation and the negative charges of the anion, the covalent uh, molecules are actually sharing valence electrons. That's where that word covalent comes from. So this is just a model of two hydrogen atoms coming together to form a diatomic molecule, the diatomic element H2. And another hydrogen atom. The electrons in this atom are being attracted by that nucleus and the electrons on this atom are being attracted by that nucleus and there's a certain, this is just an energy diagram, don't worry about it too much, but there's a certain minimum energy where they're close enough but not too far away to, not close enough but not too close such that the nucleus repel each other too much but not too far away for the electron of one atom to be attracted by the nucleus of the other atom. And when that happens, we form a covalent bond. And covalent um, compounds are also referred to as molecules. They're discrete um, collections of atoms that are held together by covalent attractions. Okay, so um, covalent um, molecules are typically formed between nonmetals and nonmetals. I need to point this out to you because when we're naming compounds, we use different systems of nomenclature depending on whether or not it's an ionic compound or a covalent compound. The ionic compound is the metal name, then the anion name with the IDE suffix or the um, polyatomic anion. In covalent molecules, um, it's similar in that we have, um, uh, in this particular examples, we have um, the different atoms that are held together by the covalent bonds are named differently. And they're typically, we identify them as collections between nonmetals and other nonmetals. Well, I've already talked to you about the seven common diatomic um, elements. They are covalent compounds, and you need to memorize them. Um, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, chlorine, and iodine. Um, we're going to be looking at the Lewis structures in the next um, unit. We're not going to worry about the Lewis structures of covalent compounds right now. Uh, I gave your teacher a simple worksheet for looking at very, very simple Lewis structures of very, very simple diatomic uh, molecules, but we're going to take a detailed look um, in the next unit. So don't worry so much about that right now. What I want you to know simply is how to recognize and how to name these um, covalent compounds. First, we're going to look at naming binary covalent compounds. Binary means there's just two different, um, oh, this is the wrong table. Oops, my bad. I couldn't figure out why that was so small. Naming binary covalent compounds. Um, binary covalent compounds uh, just have two different um, types of elements in them. Um, you know, there's, in, for, for example, there's phosphorus and chlorine. That's binary. There's two different elements. And the way we name um, these covalent compounds, first of all, we recognize them as a covalent compound. You look at the two elements. You look at the periodic table and you recognize phosphorus is a nonmetal, chlorine is a nonmetal, this must be a covalent compound. I need to use the um, naming structure or the naming uh, system for covalent compounds to name this. Okay? If I was using the ionic system, this would be phosphorus chloride. 
but it's not an ionic compound. It's a covalent compound. Covalent compounds, we never know the number of, um, of the different types of atoms in the compound, so we have to use prefixes. We don't use prefixes for ionic compounds. We know how many elements are going to be in there based on the charge. So in this case, this particular element, first of all, or excuse me, compound, I recognize it as a um, covalent nonmetal nonmetal. I name it. The first element is always just going to get the um, elemental name phosphorus. Whoops, I'm rushing phosphorus, and then the second element is just going to be the elemental name with the IDE suffix again, but this time I need to use a prefix to identify the number. So it's going to be phosphorus trichloride. Um, in this case, carbon, if I only have um, one element um, and it's the first element, I don't have to use the mono prefix, but if on the second element I do. So in this case, I don't say mono carbon monoxide. I say carbon mon, and I don't say monoxide when there's a um, thou that follows the O in the, in the mono prefix, I leave that second O off. So it's monoxide, okay, instead of monoxide. In this case, it's carbon, there's two oxygens, so I use the di, carbon dioxide. In this case, nitrogen monoxide, excuse me, nitrogen monoxide telling me that there's one oxygen, again, monoxide. Sorry, I'm writing so big and sloppy. And this last one, what's the name here? Okay, this time I have two of the first, so it's going to be di. The only time you leave off the prefix on the first one is if it's uh, one. Um, all the other times you have to use the prefix. So it's dinitrogen pent. And then, again, since... Um, the um, element starts with a vowel. I don't say pentaoxide, I say pentoxide. I leave off the A if it's going to be vowel vowel. Okay? So that's the, the deal. It, they're pretty straightforward. You just have to memorize the prefixes, know when to use the prefixes. You don't use the mono on the first one. You only use prefixes on the first one if there's more than one, the first one being the first element. And um, you put the IDE suffix on again even in the case of the covalent compounds. So you just need to practice um, naming those. The other, and, and the, they're covalent compounds because they share electrons when they form the bonds. They make unique molecules, so we can also call them molecules or covalent compounds. Those words can be used interchangeably, and we use prefixes to name them when it's a binary covalent compound.